Welcome to That's Good Sports. I am Brandon. I'm trying to capture the essence of the beautiful Philip Lindsay hair perna. That soft, poofy hair shall be mine. Did I nail the look? Let me know in the comments. Now, if the NFL had any balls, any balls at all, they would have scheduled this for the Broncos to wear their all orange color rush uniforms. Could you imagine Case Keenum and Jeff Driscoll trying to spot open receivers when everyone looks like they're trying to guide traffic through a construction zone? The chances of finding your receiver in that orange bukkake would be slimmer than Steve Weatherford's tan lines. Yes, I needed an excuse to show this picture one, one more time. I'll break down this Broncos Bengals matchup with the kind of detail that would impress even Peyton Manning. That's good sports. I do have Big Dick Patreon shout outs for my new supporters, Nick, McNemar, McNamar, with a girthy $10 donation, and Emily, Bella Rose, hitting me with that five spot. Patreon's how I make a living. It's how I pay Wilkies to help me podcast and write this show sometimes. So if you want to support it, patreon.com slash that's good sports. I also want to thank everybody for helping me hit that 100,000 subscriber mark yesterday. What a milestone that really helps me do nothing in life, but makes me feel good. I'll try to have a thank you video up for that some point soon. 100,000 subs. Only 900,000 away from really being relevant on YouTube. Now the Bengals do get the traditional half point for home field advantage. Paul Brown Stadium looks very similar to Bronco Stadium at Mile High or whatever the fuck it's called now but with one key difference. The Bengals had the courtesy to name their stadium after their founder, Paul Brown. But don't expect the greedy Broncos brass to honor Pat Bolin with the same love and name the Broncos stadium Big Dick Player Paradise to truly give Mr. Bolin the credit he deserves. Vance Joseph versus Marvin Lewis in the news. <laughs> Is it fair to reward someone for simply not screwing up that seems to be enough to get the heat off of Vance, Vance Joseph for now at least. I know that the last few weeks I've been saying that I would never, ever, ever, never, ever, never, ever give Vance Joseph an advantage in a coaching matchup. But that was before I knew the Bengals were going to be coached by the tag team of Marvin Lewis and Hugh Jackson, the football equivalent of George W. and Dick Cheney. Everyone thinks Dalton fractured his thumb, but I know. I know it was a hunting accident. Maybe that's the real reason the NFL didn't want the Broncos wearing Hunter Orange in Cincinnati. Quarter point for Vanny Josie. Broncos O-line and running backs first, Bengals front seven. This is going to be one of the most pivotal matchups of the game. The Broncos line looked like it would fall to shambles after Leary, Paradis, and Garcia all went down. And somehow it's gotten even better. The current unit of Bowles, Turner, McGovern, Wilkinson, and Valdir have allowed just one sack in the last two weeks against two really good pass rushing teams. The Steelers lead the league in sacks right now. Uh, I, still, I still miss Matt Paradis though. But what if he was the guy telling Bowles to do all of the holding penalties? Never thought of that, did ya? I see right through you, Paradis. I see right through. I already talked about how much I love Philip Lindsay in his case for Rookie of the Year episode this week, so it goes without saying, he is the key to everything offensively for the Broncos in this game. The Bengals are currently giving up a second worst 147.5 rushing yards per game. The Bengals also have the eighth fewest sacks, which means they can't stop the run or rush the quarterback which is weird because they do have talent on their defensive line with Carlos Dunlap and Geno Atkins. Their issue is injuries to their defensive linemen this season and that their most talented linebacker is Vontez Perfect. The Bengals trio of linebackers is like if you wanted to start an acapella group and your only musical friends were Kanye West, Rebecca Black, and Fred Durst. Broncos get a cushy half point here. Uh, could be a full point if Vance Joseph and Bill Musgrave had a clue as to how good Philip Lindsay really is. Should we give him more carries? Nah, we're winning. 
Look what the Panthers are doing with Christian McCaffrey. Broncos ball catchers versus Bengals secondary. The Bengals and Broncos actually have something in common here. They're both death traps for tight ends. They're the equivalent of the cabin in the woods in the Evil Dead movies. Sure, looks like a fun vacation spot to go to with your friends. And then you leave alone with all your friends dead, on IR, missing fucking body parts, and reading the Necronomicon like a self-help help book. The Bengals have four tight ends on IR, the Broncos have three. The good news is Demarius Thomas scored two touchdowns last week. The bad news is DT plays for the fucking Texans. And even more appalling is Demarius Thomas hadn't had a two touchdown game since 2015. It took Bill O'Brien three weeks to do what the Broncos hadn't been able to do in three years. The other good news is the Bengals secondary is like the Broncos secondary without a Chris Harris Jr. Their best player is rookie safety Jesse Bates, which does concern me a little bit because that's who primarily picks off Case Keenum, safeties. Cortland Sutton has yet to catch more than three passes in a game this season. If he doesn't break that number this week, then something is terribly wrong with this offense. Matt Lacoste should continue to get a lot of targets at tight end with Hireman out due to broken ribs and bruised lungs. Or as Vance Joseph called it this week, a major ouchie for the tight end. He didn't say that. Denver should be able to run and throw against this defense. Half point for the Broncos. Uh, Matt Lacoste could also be a great sneaky cheap DFS player. Special teams versus special teams. Wadmania is averaging 44.1 yards per punt, which is the exact same as an injured Marquette King was averaging. There have only been four punt returns for touchdowns this season in the NFL and three kick returns for touchdowns. None of them performed by the Bengals or Broncos. Uh, I'm gonna give the Broncos a 0.25 advantage because Brandon McManus is better than Randy Bullock. That's not Bullock's, that's the truth. Bengals O-line and running backs versus Broncos front seven. The Bengals offensive line is what we in the biz call shit equilibrium which means they are equal part shit in run blocking and pass protection, which I think gives even more credit to Joe Mixon's talent as a running back. Joe Mixon could be the singular reason the Bengals win on Sunday. I think it's unlikely because Denver has been good against the run since those couple weeks we will not speak of, but if you put Mixon on a team with an average offensive line, I think he'd have close to, if not a thousand rushing yards right now. I also think the Bengals have to feature him to take pressure off of the noob starter, Jeff Driscoll. Denver is down a man in the pass rush department with Shaq Barrett's injury. They promoted Jeff Holland to the active roster to fill in for Shaq Barrett, but he might not even be active Sunday. Hopefully, all we're talking about is Von Miller and Bradley Chubb wrecking the game by sacking the nuts off of Jeff Driscoll while they own Cedric Ogbuye and the much easier to pronounce Bobby Hart. This is basically the opposite matchup Denver had against that Steelers line. And my bold prediction is Chubb and Miller both have more than one sack in this game. Half point for the Broncos. Bengals ball catchers versus Broncos secondary. Wide receiver John Ross ran the fastest 40 yard dash in the history of the NFL Combine a couple years ago. But Chris Harris has made it known that he officially does not give a shit because he's already covered Tyree Kill twice this year. One player he should worry about, however, is AJ Green, who says he will play this week. If you remember, AJ Green has caught four touchdowns in the last six games against the Broncos. Clearly, he's been taking night classes at the Antonio Gates School of How to Torch the Broncos. Special guest lecturers, Tyree Kill and Will Disley. I think AJ Green and Tyler Boyd might be the most overlooked wide receiver duo in the NFL right now, and it's because the Bengals just keep losing. The predicament for the Broncos is deciding when Chris Harris should cover AJ Green and when he should cover Tyler Boyd, while the rest of the secondary is still confused about whether or not they're playing zone defense, press man coverage, or are already on the sideline watching the Broncos offense. Darian Stewart had maybe the worst game of his professional career against the Steelers. Six of the 10 NFL interception leaders this season are safeties. 
And with Darian Stewart, Justin Simmons, Will Parks, and Sua Cravens, I find it per perplexing Joe Woods, a secondary expert, has yet to figure out how to best utilize those guys. Tremaine Brock is also out of this game with an injury, putting even more pressure on Bradley Roby and Isaac Yadam to improperly pass off coverage to Darian Stewart. Half point here for the Bengals, because the Broncos secondary, very questionable. And the big dick matchup, Case Keenum versus Jeff Driscoll of the O'Driscoll gang. Is it weird that Andy Dalton broke his thumb considering he hasn't been able to do this? since October. <laughs> Thumbs up joke, huh? Now if you read the Bengals Twitter account like I do, then Jeff Driscoll already has this game won. He's the greatest athlete to enter the NFL, well, since John Elway. He was drafted by the 49ers and the Red Sox, which means he's technically a World Series champion right now. My one question is, if he's such a great athlete, why the hell couldn't he beat out Andy Dalton for the starting QB job? Andy Dalton is the least impressive, good-ish QB I've ever watched. Maybe next to Joe Flacco. To Driscoll's credit though, he did score this 27-yard touchdown run against the Saints when the Bengals only trailed them by 44 points. Case Keenum has basically played the same all year long. Not good enough to praise, but not bad enough to hate on. The main difference lately is he isn't throwing interceptions. He threw at least one pick for the first eight games this season, and now hasn't thrown one for three straight weeks. It doesn't matter how good or bad the defense is that he's playing against. Keenum will probably throw for 200 yards, at best two touchdowns and zero picks, at worst zero touchdowns and one pick. You would expect the Bengals to try and help their inexperienced quarterback by running the hell out of the ball. But they also have nothing to lose by letting Driscoll air raid a questionable Broncos secondary. I'm gonna give Case Keenum a .25 advantage, mostly because I don't know who the hell Driscoll really is. And there you have it in all of its glory. Denver has the advantage. Haven't been able to say that for a while. They have a better team than the Bengals and they have the most momentum heading into this game than they've had all year long. And we're actually talking about the playoffs again in Denver. And the Broncos and Bengals have the same fucking record at five and six. But they feel like different teams right now. I'm picking the Broncos because if they can't beat the Bengals, sans Andy Dalton with a lurking Hugh Jackson on the sideline, they have no business being associated with the word playoffs right now. Broncos win. 34 to 20 with one defensive touchdown scored by Isaac Yadam. Whoa, what? Thanks for watching another episode of That's Good Sports. Please subscribe here on YouTube. Share this video with your mortgage broker. He or she needs to know what I do. Again, thank you for the 100,000 subscribers. That's pretty fucking cool. I'm on Twitter at Brandon Perna, Instagram at Brandon Perna, and Will Keys and I do a podcast every Thursday on my second channel, That's Good Podcasts, if you want to sub there.